The Calgary Police Service continues to investigate the death of a six-year-old girl in the Northeast and are releasing new information to the public. On Sunday, November 13th, 2011, at approximately 7.15 p.m., Calgary police were called to the 6700 block of Temple Drive Northeast. For reports of a six-year-old girl with undetermined injuries sustained in her home. Police were originally told by family members that the girl had fallen down a flight of stairs. The victim, Mika Don Jordan, died in hospital on Monday, November 14, 2011. And an autopsy was completed on Wednesday, November 16, 2011. The autopsy concluded that she died as a result of blunt force trauma and the death was declared a homicide. Police can now reveal that the blunt force trauma injuries sustained by Mika were to her head and abdomen. They are not consistent with a fall down the flight of stairs. Investigations. Investigators have received new medical evidence that provides information regarding the timing of Mika's injuries and when the injuries were sustained. Police also believe Mika may have received other injuries prior to her death. This includes a severe third degree burn that covered the palm of Mika's hand and fingers. This new evidence shows that at the time Mika received the burn injury and when she received the blunt force trauma injuries, she was in sole care of her biological father and her stepmother. They continue to not cooperate with the investigation. Given the new medical evidence that has come to light, investigators are confident that they will be able to move the investigation forward. I'll now take your questions. Are you officially naming uh, bio father and stepmother as suspects now? They are suspects in this investigation, and they have been since early in the investigation. Can you talk more about her injuries, like, at all? I know, besides blunt force trauma, like, Without going into detail to protect the integrity of the investigation, I can say that there are blunt force trauma injuries to the head and abdomen. Can you say how long of the time frame between the, the blunt force trauma injuries and, and the burn injuries? How many is the time period between those? Uh, we do have an indication of the time period, but to protect the integrity of the investigation, I can't release it at this time. But as part of the investigation, we look at who had exclusive opportunity during the time these in injuries were inflicted. And we believe that both the biological father and the stepmother had exclusive opportunity to the child. I know you can't say a specific time, but can you say whether it was days or hours or months? Or I can't get into specifics in regards to the time. Do you guys believe that there was ongoing abuse? We believe that there were other injuries inflicted on the child uh, during the period uh, when she was uh, with both the biological father and the stepmother. So over one weekend? Over one weekend? I, I can't provide a timeline. Uh, protect the integrity of the investigation. Other injuries aside from the blunt force injuries and the burn injuries? There were other injuries involved as well. I can't go into detail. Can you say what you think that caused the burn? Like, does it appear like a stove burn? We were provided with an explanation in regards to the burn, and we believe we've discounted that explanation to our investigation. Can I can't go into what, detail. Oh, you can't say what you no. think it was. Okay, no. but you, what their story was doesn't match up. No. Can, is that kind Again, of a common theme? We, we did explain, we did receive an explanation in regards to the burn, but we believe we've discounted that explanation. How difficult does it make it when you're constantly provided inaccurate information about, about what went on in the home? It's very difficult, and that's why these investigations take a long time to resolve. They're very complex investigations, and we have to ensure that we conduct a complete and thorough investigation to the point where we can lay charges. Does this make it that you're closer though to laying charges? Yeah, we have uh, moved this investigation forward. The new medical evidence that we've received has allowed us to move this investigation forward. We're confident based on this new medical information that is the timeline of the injuries that this case will be resolved. So if you're confident, is there any reason why no one's been arrested yet? We have a number of investigative um, avenues that we have to follow up before we can get to the point where we uh, can lay charges. You 
have two suspects, is it a matter of determining whether both were at fault or one individual was at fault? That is one of the things that we have to consider and hopefully will come out during the course of our investigation. So for, for providing this update, what do you hope to achieve today? Well, I think this is a very high profile investigation. We've had a lot of media inquiries and with all homicide investigations, again, it's high profile. Um, we were not able to provide a lot of information in the early stages in the investigation, but we just wanted to provide an update that we are moving this investigation forward and that we're, we believe that we're close to making an arrest. I have one last question. Can you explain, I don't know if you can or not, but what is it about the blunt force trauma that makes you believe that it wasn't consistent with a fall? Were the injuries just more severe? Again, I can't go into detail in regards to the injuries to protect the integrity of the investigation. We do have a timeline and again that's part of our investigation and hopefully the answers to those questions in regards to the other injuries in the timeline will come out during the course of the investigation. Were these guys ever known to police before? No they were not. And can you say whether the police have been called to that residence before? Uh, I don't believe we had that. You spoke about the biological father and the stepmother. How about the biological mother? How is, has she been able to play a factor? She has been cooperative with the investigation. And during the early stages of the investigation, of course, we kept an open mind and we were looking at all possibilities. But again, she has been cooperative with the investigation throughout and remains so. And she's not con being considered a suspect at all? No, she is not. But you've said that those two had exclusive opportunity. Yes, again, what we do is we look at who had exclusive opportunity in regards to child death investigations. And we believe that the biological father and the stepmother had exclusive opportunity at the time of these injuries. So what will, be, what will happen next? We will continue with our investigation. And as I stated before, we have a number of investigative steps that we have to uh, follow through with before we get to the point where we can uh, make an arrest and make charges.